Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on Mathematics N5. In this platform, we shall be focusing uh, on question number three of April uh, 2020 question paper, whereby uh, we are going to be applying uh, the, uh, the applications of derivatives uh, so that we can see how uh, actually, where do we actually use these derivatives uh, in uh, mathematics? Uh, where do we apply these derivatives in our calculations? All right, so we're not going to waste much time, guys. Quickly rushing through the questions. On question number three uh, of April 2020, we are given uh, if f of x is equivalent to x cubed minus 3x plus 1, determine the coordinates of the turning points of f of x. Okay, that's two marks for that. Okay, or well, is it two marks? Let's see uh, if it actually corresponds to what we are given there. So uh, in actual sense, guys, if you are to find the turning points, okay, let me just write this first. Okay, this is uh, f of x, which is equivalent to x uh, cubed minus three x uh, plus one. Okay, so we must understand that uh, whenever we are dealing with the uh, turning points, at any turning point, it's either maximum or minimum, what you must know is that the first derivative must be equal to zero. As long as you are dealing with a turning point, the first derivative must be equal to zero. So what you are supposed to have in this case is the first derivative of the given function. Thus, the first derivative with respect to x, uh, we are going to multiply here by three, which is three times one, that's three x to the exponent of two. Remember guys, the derivatives you multiply uh, here and you subtract a one. So that is going to be three x squared. Uh, then we move on, we've got negative three X, which is going to give us a uh, negative three, then plus one is a constant, which is a zero there. So that's our first derivative. And we are saying that this first derivative must be equal to one. So three X squared minus three X must be equal to a zero. Sorry for that, uh, that's a zero. So not a one, but a, a zero. So for you to find the values of X, you can factorize, you can whatever that way that you can uh, to solve this equation. Okay, as for me, I'm just going to transpose uh, negative three to that side of the equation, which is to the right side, that is going to be a positive three. So uh, dividing by three here, we are going to have X squared because we are multiplying, so you can divide. So that's X squared, which is equal to one. So to find X, introduce the square root, to remove the square that we are given here. So the moment that we introduce the square root, we know that uh, the square root of any number is a plus or minus. So this is going to be plus or minus one. So we can say that uh, at the turning points that we have, we've got our X uh, being equal to one. That is the first value of X. So we must find the corresponding value of Y. And the second turning point that we have it's at a condition where x is minus one. So we have to substitute uh, the value of minus one to find uh, the value of y. So why are we going to substitute these values? We substitute into the original equation that we are given uh, in this case here. In place of x, we're going to substitute one uh, to the exponent of three minus three times one plus one. That's it uh, from your calculator. Uh, direct, this is going to give us a negative one. Okay, we do the same on minus three, which is going to, or minus one, which is going to give us uh, a positive three. So when X is one, Y is negative one. When X is minus one, Y is negative uh, three. So these are the turning points that we are given, uh, that we are asked to calculate. Okay, we are not asked to differentiate, to say which one is the maximum, which one is the minimum. No, the question is just determine the coordinates of, a turning point. Okay, so that was uh, question 3.11. On 3.12, draw up a table of value of x. So we're given uh, to draw a table of x. That's a table of values, okay? And f of x, where x is arranging, where x is ranging from minus 2 up to 2. Okay, so we are given, yeah, this is our f of x. It's a continuation from this uh, question that we are given. So how are we going to have our table in this case? Uh, Remember that we are given our f of x, so this is 3.12. We are given that our f of x is given as uh, x cubed. Okay, sorry for that. So that's x cubed minus 3x plus 1 like this. And we are given to draw a table which shows the values of x 
and the values of f of x. So f of x simply means y is equal to that's that's the indication of what of f of x. So we are going to have our table in this case uh, with the values of x that we are given. Uh, take note that we are given that it's supposed to be x. And for any value of x that we have, it is going to give us the corresponding value of y, which is f of x. So y is represented by f of x. And our values of x, they are going to range, okay? We are given here that these values of x are going to be taken from minus two up to positive two. So we are going to have these values uh, on the table uh, from minus two. So you're gonna have minus two, uh, minus one, We've got a zero there. After a zero, we've got a one, a two. So up to two, that is uh, what the person is asking you here. Uh, so that is the table of values that you're going to have at the end. Uh, and if you have to check here, guys, please take note. We are going to substitute the values of X into the equation that you're given. So if X is minus two, that means you are substituting uh, in place of X minus two, that's minus two to the exponent of three minus three by minus two plus one. So in place of X, you are substituting these values that you're given. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to show uh, this or the calculator guys. I just want you to substitute on your calculator. So these are the values that we are going to obtain corresponding. Uh, if there's any value that is not corresponding guys, let me know so that we can redo that this question. So here we're going to obtain negative one, three, a zero here, uh, that's, uh, sorry, that's a one, not a zero here. So that's a one, a negative one, and a positive three. Okay, so these are the values of X that you're going to have. And from these values, uh, we are just drawing the table. So three marks is just for the table, okay? And let's check the other parts of uh, 3.13. Now they're asking us to draw a neat graph of f of x. It's a continuation from the same of f of x. Between these values, which is from minus two up to two, showing the turning points on it. Remember, we calculated the turning points here uh, at the first part of the question. We calculated the turning points. And at this point, we have the values uh, that we are given from minus, one, minus two up to two. So what you need first is the shape that you're going to have. The coefficient here of uh, x to the exponent of three here is uh, one, which means we are having our a, which is greater than a zero. So if it is like that, the shape is going to be forever positive. It's going to be positive like that, okay? So that is uh, if a is greater than zero. If it was a is less than zero, then it was going to be either way when uh, this is becoming a negative throughout like that. Okay, so uh, the shape is very, very important. Okay, so we are going to have our sketch here. So here, I'm just going to have a sketch of how this graph was supposed to look like. Okay, so let me just show you here as a sketch. So this is 3.13. Uh, you're gonna have our x-axis and uh, y-axis. Okay, uh, so this is our x-axis here, and that's our y-axis. Okay, so remember that x is taken from minus two up to two. So that's zero, minus one, minus two, one, and two. Okay, then uh, we can mark the points uh, for y and the points for the, 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 as the corresponding values. Okay, so here we can just have it as negative one, negative two, negative three, uh, positive one, positive two, positive three. So remember the shape that we said our graph is going to look like here. This is the shape uh, that I indicated at this point. Okay, so let us mark the points minus two uh, and minus one. So we've got minus two and minus one, which is going to be somewhere here. Uh, that's negative two in X and negative one in Y. So it can be somewhere there. The next point was negative one and three. So that's negative one here and Y is three at this point. Uh, the other point was zero versus one. So this is zero versus one here. And another point was one versus negative one. So this is one versus negative one. Two was versus three. So this is two versus three like this. So us knowing the shape of the graph, how it's supposed to look like, 
we can have our sketch like this, okay? So we just have to uh, join the points that we are given in this case. So I'm just going to have something like this. Uh, so it's going to reach a certain point at minus one, three, something like that. Mm, then uh, we've got uh, at this point, okay? Then it reaches the point of one here, goes to like something like this, okay? So this is the sketch uh, that we are going to have of f of x or the graph of y, which is equivalent to x cubed minus three X uh, plus one. Okay, so on the graph, what you're supposed to indicate also are the turning points. This is an instruction that we are given here that uh, draw a neat, okay, draw a neat graph of F of X between these values showing the turning points on it. Okay, so the turning points were at one versus minus one. So this is one versus minus one of which we have this point on the graph here, one uh, versus, minus one, that is this point here. We've got this point on our graph, which is uh, the turning point. So that's one versus negative one, okay? And uh, the other point that was at uh, negative one, so this was negative one versus three. We also have this point on our table, negative one versus three, which is this point here. So that's another turning point, negative one versus three. So the question is for you to indicate this uh, points on the on the graph. Okay, so that was uh, the most important part on uh, on this graph. If you are to draw this graph, this is what actually uh, is needed. Okay, on three point one four, let us check the other part, which is question three point one four. Use the table and the graph to estimate the value uh, for the best route between x is equal to one and x is equal to two. Take note. We want to find the best route that is uh, the best solution. So the route is actually uh, a solution that you are using if you are like you're solving for, for X, okay? And then, uh, so a given between X is equal to one and X is equal to two of the equation. Remember from our F of X, now you use it as an equation. Then use Taylor's or Newton's method twice. Take note, we are using uh, Taylor's method or Newton's method twice to determine a better approximation of this root. Root correct to three decimal uh, figures. Okay, so what you are given in this case is that you are to estimate the first root, which is the best root of your choice between the values of x is equal to one and x is equivalent to two. Okay, so this is what you're going to have. So this is 3.14, uh, okay? So let's just have our, our table and our, just our solution, okay? Let's just have our solution here. So on 3.14, we are given that the value or the root that we are supposed to have is between x is equal to one and x is equal to two. So we are supposed to find a better uh, root or a better solution between these so two solutions that we have between these two values. So how do you find a better solution? You add the two, then you divide by two. Okay, so it's like the average of the two. So our better solution, which is the first solution, that's x naught is going to be the sum of the two that we're going to add one plus two over two which is uh, three over two and three over two is same as one comma, one comma five. So now from this solution or from this root that we have, we are now asked to apply the Taylor's method twice or the Newton's method twice to find the better approximation of this root that we are referring to as X is equal to one comma five. So what is it about uh, the Taylor's method or the Newton's uh, method? Remember, I, I worked this method in another way from uh, the other platform. So in this case, I'm going to demonstrate this also in another way so that you can choose uh, the best uh, way of uh, uh, actually answering this. Remember that uh, if you are finding the value of X, I told you guys that you're going to work with f of x, which is the one that you are given in terms of any over 
f of x, which is the first derivative, sorry, of uh, that xn, okay, of uh, x. So you find the first derivative, you substitute the value of x, okay, then you divide. So you're going to do this, uh, the value of x that you obtain, you substitute again into the formula and so on and so on. But uh, you can just save it like as a table, like uh, the one that I'm going to show you here, is, which is another way. I don't confuse these guys, it's just one and the same thing. So if we are given our x n here, uh, that is the solution, uh, like this is our x naught in this case, okay? We are going to have the normal function, which is our f of x. So it's going to be written as f of x n. Then in this case, we are going to have the first derivative. So it's like just rewriting aside, like uh, having this aside, okay? Then we know that the solution that you are going to have which is x of any, so here I'm just going to write it as x of any plus one is equivalent to x any minus f of x n like this over the first derivative with respect to, so it's just like a, a substitution concept that you are just uh, doing in this case. Okay, uh, what is this substitution concept? Okay, we have f of x, okay, from, uh, or that part that we were given, which is x cubed minus 3x plus 1. We already uh, have this expression from, uh, from the calculations before. So let us just write it aside here. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Uh, remember that our f of x is equivalent to uh, x cubed minus 3x plus 1. Okay. Then we have to find the first derivative of this, like we need this first derivative, which is going to be three x squared minus three. Okay, so on the first part here, our x value, which is x n, is the first value, which is x naught in this case, which is one comma five, or you can write it as x one, or it can be x whatever that you want. Okay, so the value for x that we are given is one comma five. So we are going to take that x naught, which is equal to one comma five. So when we are saying f of x n, it means in place of f of x, we are going to substitute the value of x, which is one comma five. So here in this f of x that we have, we are going to substitute one comma five in place of in place of x. So that's only in place of x in this case. Okay. So in place of x. You substitute 1,5 like uh, 1,5 to the exponent of 3 minus 3 into 1,5 plus 1 like this. So you're substituting 1,5, okay? So take note, whatever that you get, you're supposed to round off to three decimal places. So the first one is going to give us something like negative uh, 0, 0,125. So that's 0, 0,125. Okay, you do the same thing on the first derivative of f of x here, you substitute the same x, which is 1,5. So if you substitute 1,5 here, we are going to have something like 3,75. Then our xn, which is equivalent to, take note the formula, it's xn minus, you divide the two. So it's actually like this, guys. Remember, these values, we have them uh, separately. So let me just do it this way. So we are going to have x n, which is the value of x that we are having here, which is uh, 1,5. So this is going to be 1,5 minus f of x n. We have here our f of x n, which is negative 0, uh, 125. Okay, everything over f uh, from this part is going to be the first derivative. Okay, so for the first derivative, we have got three. 0.75. Okay, so this is what we have. So definitely, all you need is to use your calculator to divide uh, here, and we are going to uh, we are going to obtain something of this nature, which is one comma five uh, three three. If you round off to three decimal places, so that's the first solution. So remember, you asked you to apply this twice. Okay, so what are you going to do for the second part? Now our x is at 1,533. So this is the value of x that we are going to start with here. We are going to substitute our x, which is now, get right, it is x1, because remember, I started at 0, 1, 2, and so forth. So our x now is 1,533. 
Okay, so doing the same thing, we are going to substitute in place of f of x, we substitute our x as 1,533. So here, now it is going to be 1,533 in place of x. So if we substitute, our answer is going to be 0, 0,005. Okay, the same thing on the first derivative, you substitute 1,533 in the first derivative in place of x here on 3x squared minus 3. So in place of x, if you substitute 1,533, this is going to be 4,053. Okay, then we find the second solution just like what we did here, xn minus this formula. So that means here we are going to have our x and which is the value of x that you started with here. So it's going to be 1,533 minus, okay, we have got f of xn, which is for f of x, for f of x, we got 0, 0,005. So this is 0, 0,005, everything over the first derivative, which is uh, 4,053. Uh, so all you need is to simplify uh, divide, you've got your calculator, guys. Make sure that you use your calculator properly. You're going to obtain something like 1,5, 3 to, uh, to 3 decimal places. Okay, remember the instruction to 3 decimal places. So therefore, our x actually is going, it's like an approximation value that is not exact value that you have given. So it's going to be uh, 1,5, uh, 3, 2. Okay, uh, so that was uh, the better approximation that we can have. So take note, we are not there, we're not saying this is the actual solution. No, it's a better approximation. That is not, it's not the exact answer, but uh, it's nearly uh, to the actual answer that we are supposed to be uh, to be having. Okay, so that was uh, question three, uh, point four, 3.14. Okay, so this is 3.14. On 3.3, we are now given that water is being poured into a conical reservoir. Okay, so there's a conical reservoir that we have where we are going to pure water inside that uh, reservoir. Okay, at a rate, so take note the rate of which the water is being poured into that, it's at pi cubic meters per second. That is the rate of curing the water. The reservoir is a radius of six meters across the top and a height of 12 meters. At what rate is the depth of water increasing when the depth is six meters? So take note, you want to know at what rate is the depth increasing, the depth, which means the height of the container. And we are talking, we are given that it's a conical reservoir, which means it's in the shape of a cone. Okay, so this is, um, what you're going to have, uh, let's just remove some of the other things here so that we can understand this question. So uh, given that there is a conical reservoir here, all right, so it's something of this nature. Uh, we're just going to have our cone like this. All right, so this is our conical reservoir that we have. And we are given that on this conical reservoir, we know that it's going to have uh, the or the radius from the diameter, then uh, the perpendicular height of uh, the cone here, which meets at 90 degrees. So this is the radius and this is the height. So the height in this case is the one that is representing the depth of water. So take note here, we are dealing with the depth of water. So this is the one that is going to represent the depth of water, which is the height, okay. So on the question there, we are given the condition that water is being pured into a conical tower at a rate of, so this rate here that we are given is pi cubic meters per second, that's volume. So we are given volume per second, okay. So this is the volume that we are given per, per second. All right, so we are going to take this information which is uh, the volume per second, which was given as pi cubic meters per, per second. All right. On the other hand, we are given that the height, the radius is six meters, okay? And the height is 12 meters. So we've got a radius of six meters. So I'm gonna indicate here uh, the radius of six meters. And 
uh, the height, which is the depth of 12 meters. Okay, so this is the, the diagram that you're given. And also the formula for the volume of a cone was the conical part, which is a third pi r squared h. All right, so what, I mean, what, what is the question about? Okay, at what rate is the depth of water increasing when the depth is six meters already here? Okay, we are given a height of 12 meters, but we are given now that the depth is at six meters. The depth now is at six meters. So how are we going to, 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 to find this? How are we going to, to have this? That is the question. All right, we cross-checking on this part here. We are to find the, the rate of the depth. Okay, I want you to understand that's why I'm taking this, uh, my time here. Previously, the depth, remember, I told you that the, the depth is the height. The height was at 12 meters. That's when we can have the normal volume as it is. But now we are given that when the depth is at six meters, which means it has decreased from what it was originally at, the height, this one, it was at 12 meters. Now it's at six meters. So that is what we have now to say, our, our height in this case is now at six meters. That is the depth. So if there is a change in depth of six meters, which of which the depth is the, is the height, that is our depth. So we, we, these two, they are similar to each other. The way you reduce or the way that you increase the, the height is the same way that you're going to increase the radius. So, which means our radius in this case was actually at six meters. So, six that we have for the depth from the normal 12, we can see that we simply divided by two. So, 12 divided by two, that is six meters. So, the same thing here, our, 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 our radius in this case is the same. We have going to be six over three, with six over two, which is going to give us three. That is the radius that you are going to have. But these two guys, they have a relationship. The radius originally here, it's a half of the height because it's six and this is 12. So our radius is actually the height that we're given over, over two. So when the height, when the depth is at six meters, we want to see is it going to correspond the same way as the height over two, or it's going to be another scenario. So this part, we are going to apply it later on. So this one is for later use. We are going to apply this one later on. Okay, so from this information, we have uh, our radius as half of the height, as we can see from the normal information. Why are we actually writing the radius in terms of the height? Because we want to know the rate at which the depth of what is increasing. We are dealing with the depth, which is H. So from this formula of or the volume, we must have this formula in terms of the height. Okay, let's have our formula here. Remember, I said this is the formula. So we are going to have this formula in terms of the height. So in terms of the height, we understand that our, our radius, like what we saw there, the relationship is that is the height over two. Okay, that's 12 here divided by two, you get the radius, okay? So if we are to write this formula in terms of height, this is going to be V is equivalent to, so we are going to have V is equivalent to third pi, then in place of R squared, we are now substituting R in terms of H so that we can find the rate at which uh, the depth is increasing, which is going to be uh, h over 2. So this is h over 2, but take note to the exponent of 2 times h. All right, so this is a new expression or a new way of writing the volume of uh, this cone in terms of h. So we can conclude that our v is equivalent to third uh, pi times 
h to the exponent of 2, that's h squared over 2 to the exponent of 2, which is 4 times h, which is same as h over 1. So if you are to expand this, this is same as 1 over uh, 3 times 4, which is 12. So this is 1 over 12 pi h squared times h, which is h to the exponent of a 3. All right. So this is an expression for volume. So remember, previously, we are given volume per second. So how are we going to apply with the volume per second to find the, the way that the height or the depth is increasing? So the, remember, the depth is height. So we want to know how this height is being affected with respect to time. So this is going to be with respect to the time that we are given. All right. So the time that we are given in this case, we are simply saying it's a height per second. So we are simply working with the height per, per second in this case. That is that the derivative of the height with respect to, to t, where t is actually the time taken, which is the time in, in seconds. Just like this one, it's a velocity, it is the volume per second, which is the same thing as we are working with the volume per given time, like dv dt per given time. That is the same concept that we are simply having in this case. So the question is, how are we going to find the h d t? Okay, so what you would simply do here is to apply uh, the formula for dv dt. You just have to combine the terms that you are given in this case from this uh, dv uh, dt. All right, so we know that our dv dt can be found by this formula. Uh, the h is supposed to be part of the formula. Okay, so for you to have uh, dv dt, you must have t in the denominator like that. Okay, so it is going to be the derivative of the volume, but with respect to what? With respect to the height. Multiply by the derivative of the height with respect to the time uh, that we are given. So that is uh, actually the concept that you are working with. So here, that's an increase, okay, that you're going to have is truly is an increase, then we work with it as an increase, okay. So here, it was the volume that we had with respect to time, which is, which can be taken from this formula. So that means here, we can just substitute our dv, dt in this case is equivalent to dv dh, that is the derivative of volume with respect to h. So where do we have volume with respect to h? This is the expression uh, the, or the term for volume with respect to h. So what you need is to find the derivative. You multiply here, which is 3 over 12 pi h. Uh, if you subtract 1, here is going to be squared. Remember, this is uh, a derivative. And 3 over 12, that is 1 over 4. So it is going to be 1 over 4 uh, pi h uh, squared, okay? So this is writing in terms of h. Multiply by dh dt, which is the derivative of h uh, with respect to the, to the time. This is the one that we are looking for. Remember, the question needs us to find at what rate is the, 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 the rate uh, which increases for, for the depth which is the depth is the height, just like I indicated that this depth here is the height. So which means the derivative of the height with respect to T is the one that we actually need uh, on this formula. So we're going to leave it like this. All right. So what are we going to do now to find this derivative that we need of height with respect to time? We need to substitute the derivative of V with respect to t, remember, is the one that I was indicating here that it simply means the same thing. dv dt, that is the volume per second, which was pi cubic meters per second. So that one is going to be pi. So here we are going to substitute pi is equivalent to 1 over 4 pi times the height to the exponent of 2. The height that we are talking about is the depth that I indicated that we are going to use that one for later use. And we noted that the depth was equivalent or now the depth is at six meters. So that is the one that we now use that depth of six meters. Okay, so let's substitute 
the depth in this case. So this is going to be times uh, six uh, squared, then multiply uh, by dH uh, dt. Okay, since we are to calculate dH dt, we can just divide uh, both sides. We can just uh, divide both sides. In this case, we're going to have something of this nature. Uh, okay, if we divide both sides, this is uh, one over four pi times six squared. Okay, which is the same thing here, one over four pi times six squared. Okay, so this can cancel. And uh, that means our dH dt, the one that we actually need is equivalent to pi over this of which pi and pi can cancel. And uh, we can divide, this is uh, 36 and four into 36, that is uh, a nine. So we're going to have it as one over, over nine. And uh, this is the, the rate of, of the depth. The depth is height. So height is measured in meters. So it's going to be meters per time, which is measured in, six, in seconds. So it's one over nine, or someone can write it as a decimal, which is 0, 0,111 like that, meters per second. So this is the rate at which the depth is going to affect uh, per, per second. Okay, uh, let's check the other part of uh, what we had is sorry if we still have anything here all right so that's what that was actually question 3.2 uh having four marks okay to make it 15 marks on question three so these are the typical questions guys that you are supposed to revise as much as you can so make sure that you subscribe if you're new for more videos like this and uh to join the membership so that we can have access to the other videos uh, which is very, very important as we are revising. But for now, that's it, guys, for Mason African Motives. Till we meet again.